really the instruments. The instruments are a part of ORF, but ORF is really a process. It's a teaching process. And so you can use the components of ORF without having the expensive instruments. But first of all, let me tell you about instruments in case you are interested in expanding that. You understand? Everybody know what I mean by the ORF instruments. I have um, an alto xylophone and two glockenspiels over there, the small little bars that I brought with me. And those are two of the types of orange instruments. Um, but at, at church, when we went there five years ago, they had nothing. They had no orb instruments except the one that we brought, which was a, shall I say, reclaimed bass metallophone. <laughs> And it's held together with glue and tacks and anything else. But it still makes a pretty good sound as long as they don't pound on it. Mm. Uh, so that was what they started with was the one base metallophone. So being married to the Minister of Music, you can request things from the budget. Okay? <laughs> um, and so I said, what we need to do is add a thing or two each year and just, and just grow um, the instrument collection. The first thing I had to do, though, before I did that is I wanted to find a storage space where they could be kept safely and the bars wouldn't disappear, the mallets wouldn't disappear and all of that. So that's an important thing is where are you going to keep them? Because if you just leave them out in your choir room, that's probably not the only thing that goes on in that room every week. So you need to have a good place for it. And um, two years ago, I claimed a Sunday school class that nobody wanted. It, was, <laughs> it didn't have an air conditioning vent that worked mm. and it didn't have windows. And it was, it was a class of ladies. They didn't like it. <laughs> so nobody wanted to be in that class, and it happened to have a piano in there. So I claimed that for my percussion room. So that's where the ORF instruments live and all my drums and all that stuff. And we can go in there and actually play them and have a big old fat fan that we turn on because kids don't feel as hot as grown up women. Uh, so that's our, hey y'all, <laughs> uh, that's, that's the deal, we just, the first thing is to make sure you have a place for them. We're talking about how to build a collection of work instruments if you don't have them. So then I said, okay, we're going to start, add one or two each year. So the first thing I did was I bought one alto xylophone, okay? So we, got, we had the, a, a, an old junker basement telephone that we reclaimed that was going to be tossed. Um, we had that, and then we had the one alto xylophone. The next year, I bought um, two glockenspiels, a soprano and an alto. The next year, I bought, oh, he let me get it. The next year, he let me get another alto xylophone and two more glockenspiels. So now we're up to four glockenspiels, two altos, and a bass metallophone. That's pretty good right there, because then you can play most of the anthems that have more parts. Those will cover it. You can substitute, you know, some of the things. This summer, and I couldn't bring these because they wouldn't fit in the car, uh, we started building our collection of bass bars. Do you know what the bass bars are? There's one deep bass node. It's all it plays. So I got C, F, and G. So now I have one, four, and five in the key of C. We love those. That's what those big fat green mallets are. Um, I borrowed those for our drums to come. So that's what we're doing, is just building it gradually. And I've decided the next thing we're going to add is we're going we're gonna to add um, D, let's see, D, E, and A, the base bars. So I'm going to continue to add the base bars next. Because they, the, they are the priciest single thing, um, but they're so, so pleasing to make the kids just gravitate to them. Um, but they're on a wooden stand, like the. They're on, a, they're on a box, a wooden box. The C is the biggest, and it stands about this tall. The bar is about that wide and about that long. Okay. And when you play it, it's not loud. You can feel it. It's sort of, and it kind of reminds you a bit of the string bass when you hit it. It is just you play that, and the kids all go, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a, a brand? Okay, that's the other thing. With, I don't think of uh, buying the church the way I think of public school. For public school, what I want is the most durable. I'm going to spend more money to make the things last. Okay. But for church, I need to get the most for my money. I'm just thinking stewardship, right? So, 
Um, this particular brand here, and if you've ever used work instruments, uh, these bars, they're not really wood. Um, but this is, what's it say on the side? Sonor. It's yes. sonar, but it is their global beat. Global beat. Um, so it's a little less expensive. But the bars are, they almost have a, a glass or fiberglass texture to them, but they have a ring to them that the wooden bars don't have. Let's listen to them. Dead yeah, it's it's like it's not yeah. funky like a xylophone, so it has a little bit of the metallophone mm -hmm. uh, sound to it. So honestly, that's why I went with another one of these because mm -hmm. I said, why get a metallophone when I can have that? It sort of will, and you can do the. And normally on a xylophone, that you don't get that kind of sound with it. So and does this really sound close. okay with the? Mm -hmm. It does. Blend it the blends high. great. It really does. And the uh, my bass bars, they're also local beat. So they're all from that same. The only the only one that's different, my um, my Glockenspiels are also they're also sonar global beat. My metallophone is an old clunker rhythm band. Okay. Eventually it's going to graduate away as well. But for now we use it. Um, I don't use it too much actually in in performance because it's not that great. But it's fun to play. Do you have like stands? Or I something? do not have the stands. Eventually, mm -hmm. I want to do that because that's what my problem with them is. Like, what do you do in the sanctuary? There's really no place to put them mm -hmm. to play when the kids are singing. Yeah. They just sit on the floor. Mm -hmm. They just okay. sit on the floor. Now, your clock and spiels. Have, um, a friend of mine has these, mm -hmm. and I, I used to have a set. You know those wire shelf things you put in your dish cabinet mm -hmm. so that you can stack dishes. Mm -hmm. Those work great to put your glockenspiels on. And um, I left them all in my public school classroom mm -hmm. and I know that that teacher that followed me has no idea what those are for. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's not. They know what treasures they are? And I know she has, you know, she's probably stacked books on those or something. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> dishes. but you know, you can get them for, you know, a very few dollars or whatever. And that way, if they have to sit on the floor, it's up higher because that's the worst thing is the blockage mm -hmm. field are just yeah. all down in it. And where did you, what did you say it was? It's a, it's, I, I don't even know so what it's called. So why is Kelly going to Walmart? Wire shell. Oh, yeah. The one I had on won't fall down, which was right. kind of nice right. because right. then it didn't collapse. But mm -hmm. they do have them where the little legs tuck under, which oh, is nice for cool. storage. But the one I had was just straight up and down. Sometimes um, my friend has the set that the top is wood, um, like mm -hmm. wood. Fancy, mm -hmm. like lattice looking stuff, but mine was just totally wired, and I think I got, I think I did get it at Walmart uh, for just a few dollars. Mm -hmm. But those are great for your glockenspiels. The other thing I do with the glockenspiels uh, is put them on music stands. Oh, and it's like this. Because the parents want to see the children playing, and if exactly. you put them in the floor, and yeah. what I do is I put the glockenspiels in the back. And I have them stand. Okay. And I put the, the, the ridge right here. Okay. And you can't use your, your crummy stands that fall over. <laughs> it has to be stands that still have the, like this, okay? But they, it is perfect. Um, I did um, a thing last week with um, ORF instruments with my, my class at camp. And there were 29 children all on ORF instruments. They were playing partners. Um, so that was how many, 15 or instruments, and I had um, the whole back row was glockenspiel, so I had like five music stands with the glockenspiels. That's to make me want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 they were supposed to be upstairs, but I think they just moved down the hall. <laughs> but that, that's one answer to it, because then you've got elevation, and if they're at the bass instruments, they need to be up on their knees. You know, they're up on their knees, and then these guys can sit crisscross. So you do have some some tears, um, but yeah, they can, we need for the parents. We want them to see them. Let's mm -hmm. put them over to the side, and then put your singers only over to the other side, so everybody gets equal mm -hmm. visibility. visibility. It's very important for them. You know. mm -hmm. Do they make stands for those though? For the I was just thinking like for those those, those for the they big absolutely ones. do, and they roll. Mm -hmm. They roll and they adjust in height. 
Okay, so you can, I had a set in that classroom that I left, and I'm sure she knows nothing about them. But they're, they're, um, they're probably worth the money if you use your orchestra instruments a lot. And then you can, you can um, it's not, they don't bolt down, but they um, have little things to hold them on there so they don't just fall off. Mm -hmm. That is a really good investment, um, especially the rolling parts, and you don't have to pick those. Is there anything you can't put them on a rolling table? You can put them on a table, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I could uh, imagine a bench, like a bench you'd use at a picnic table, about that size would be oh, yeah. a good height. Yeah. That are the little preschool tables. Because yeah. the regular tables would be too high for them. You get the tables from your little preschool. And what you know, what else you could do is you let it be known that you, you need something, and you have those people in your church that love building stuff, you know, and they probably could build you a custom whatever exactly what you want. Put a little ridge on it there. Mm -hmm. They could do that. Yeah. I have a friend in a church in, um, near Birmingham, and um, she has all, all of their orphan instruments are stored in one central location, and all the choir rooms are on the same floor. Um, but they can go and borrow those. And somebody in her church made an orf sled, and it was, it's this big, like a, like a dolly, but it has a rope attached to it. It has wheels. And so they just come in and they put their orphan instruments and they pull that sled <laughs> down to their room. So, and I know that some creative person mm -hmm. just built that. That's not something you go and buy. You know? right. but I'm, I'm talking I'm, about people that build things. In our old sanctuary, we got tired of dragging the tables in and out every time we wanted to play the hand bells. Uh -huh. And so I thought, couldn't we just hand some tables to the modesty panel? So this man built these oak tables with a ridge and put them on a piano hinge and they hang on the modesty panel and match the, the wood in the church. So we just pull them up and pull out the little stays and put the pads on and they're there. Oh, how wonderful. Oh, awesome. Awesome. oh my back says yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the table. Our church and then we ended up getting rid of that modesty rail because of the contemporary service. Oh. We didn't need, we needed more room. Yeah. So then we lost, now we have to put up tables and yeah. play bells. I know. That's but I mean, it's still it's, it's worth it for that one little thing. That's one little thing to deal with. Some yeah. people, you know, some people are offended by the fact that you can see stuff because the modesty rails aren't here. But well, I'm so glad it's worth it for the contemporary group. I mean, you know, some people need to worship that way. So. I'm so glad we kept the handbills because a lot in a lot of contemporary settings they don't they don't well, really want to. We're we're a place. traditional church, mm -hmm. but. We do have a contemporary service. Well, that's great. What a great compromise. You know, work out the problem. But anyway, that's this is great because then when they're done, they can pick this up and go. Okay. But if you want to invest in uh, the value, invest in the mallets. Don't go cheap on the mallets. Um, these these come with really good, pretty good mallets. The the these I like. The xylophones come with. They look like resonator bell mallets. You know what I'm talking about? They don't. And so I invested in a number of different kinds. Um, also have some with the blues. But these are. Uh, I went to a conference at some point in my life that um, the the, Bert, the Perry Cole company had a sale on these, and I, I bought them out. Uh, I bought those because they they feel good and they balance real well in their hands. Um, and they have little handles and so forth. Um, so invest in the mallets. The base bars, you have to buy the mallets separately for those global boot things. So it's like $15 for one of these. And that is a big conversation to have with your kids mm -hmm. about the, the cost involved because the children have no concept of what the price of things are. I mean, even if you bring the catalog and say, let's see how much this costs. Um, and then once they realize it, they're much more willing to, to take care of them. Um, as, as you know, they just, they don't think. Mm -hmm. You know, they act before they think quite often. Imagine that, children. Mm -hmm. But anyway, if, and the, I buy almost exclusively my instruments come from West Music, which is in Iowa, westmusic.com. And they periodically offer free shipping. And so, so it's it's reasonable, and their stuff comes pretty quickly. Um, surprisingly, because um, like those are I think made in Germany, so they don't keep.
tons of those on supply that they ordered, ordered those. So anyway, I know this is Orph without the instruments, but I thought you might like to know about well, how do you get how do you get the instruments if you wanted to. So you start to add those, and as you only have a few, you mix other things with it. Hand chimes and Orph instruments go wonderfully well together. They're beautiful together. And you can also use your um, the colored bells, and you can use the um, boom micers and lots and lots of unpitched percussion um, because those truly are Orph instruments as well. Um, and then you make substitutions. So I put a couple of things in here, and I believe the pages are stapled by. Well. Ask your husband to do something. You have to give exact directions. Okay, so I think that the, the first thing in here is little David play your harp, and I think the piece that goes with it may be on the back of the second page. Am I right? Little David chant. Okay, this, you might want to just take the staple out so you can put those two things together. But we have. This was in the Growing in Grace materials, maybe in the spring of the first year. Um, and I'm, by the way, I don't think that was a cue there. I'm just saying. Um, and Dora Ann sent me an email and said, I need, I need, I need something real quick on um, orb arrangement of Little David. And okay, don't ask me to do anything without getting other stuff. So I sent her that, plus I sent her this other little part. This has been um, it's a chant that tells the story of David um, that you put in between. This is very orf like because chant is much a part of orb. So you have the orb instruments, but you also have the speech chant. So the orb components of this lesson are the instrumental ostinati and speech. And that's both of those together. So let's let's put this together and let's don't use orb instruments. So um, how about somebody come go to the table and actually I'll go and we need an F and D and a C. I'm gonna try this. This is going to now be the soprano black and spiel part. And you can put these in front of you and play. Would you like to do that? You can put them on that chair right beside you. You can put them in order right there. And you know those are the bells you can tap on top, so you don't have to worry about picking them up and ringing them. And then for the... Um, Is they're written in soprano and in treble clef. They're always written in treble clef. So this one would be, I need it. Would you run over there and get one of those? You have to take it off one of those other good ones for a second. It's going to sound better when that's an octave lower. So that's going to be the or part. Anybody want to do that? It's going to be the, I'm looking at Nikki. <laughs> Here, and she's, she's a music teacher. She should do that herself. Okay. All right. You can also have two different people play that if you want. And let's see. Let's do. Um, I'm going to use one orc instrument. I'm going to use the rock and steel. And I'm going to give you one mallet because you probably have to just play this in your lap. And let's put the, um, the alto xylophone part. So you're going to, what is it, F, C, F, C. Anybody interested? You would like to play that? Oh, I will. Oh, she does. And you can, you know what? Even though you are all music readers, I like to take off the bar. I'm going to take the G off the top. I'm going to take the G off the top. <laughs> I'm going to let you hold the mallet. I'm going to take the G off the top. The block and spiels are the hardest, hardest ones, okay? And then I'm going to take the E off the bottom. Okay, we lay that aside. And then I'm going to take D off. Because then you don't have to sit there and look at it every time. Those are sort of like bookmarks. Um, so we have, see how it's F, C. 
So it's like a, a, a placeholder and easy for the eye to catch. I, I do not, I do not recommend taking every bar off except the three that you're going to use. They need to learn to see it in the pattern. Uh, but taking off placeholders is, yes, that's a fine thing to do. So we have um, soprano blockage spiel part played by colored bells, right? And we have the alto xylophone played by glockage spiel. Uh, we're going to pretend those are resonator bells and we don't have a glockage spiel, so those okay. resonator bells. And we have bass metallophone played by boom whackers. Let's hear how it sounds, okay? So um, I'll just count off and let's put it together without voices. Ready? One, two, ready, and. Okay, let's do it again. You play it through one time and then we'll sing with you the second time. Ready? And here we go. to beef that little sound up if you wanted to. Now, you know what we did with the caps, right? 
Everybody. Okay, I do not buy, I do not buy, this is, I do not buy the great big boom whackers. Why? They get beat up and then they poke each other with them and then they just take up so much space in the storage cabinet. So I buy these and just put the activator caps on them when I want the lower sound. This is the same thing as the twice as tall one once you put the activator cap on it. Didn't know that, did you? So, and the other thing you can do with that is you can, um, um, if you don't, if you only have that one octave, you can put this this part without activator caps, and then have another set down here with. So then you got two octaves of boom whackers. and it's worth also investing in the sharps and flats on your boom whackers. They're I know they're a little pricey when you only get five. But they're really worth it because then you get more opportunities to use it. Um, so, boom are, of all the things in music education, boom whackers are affordable. And it was the greatest thing when they came out because people couldn't afford um, or expensive work instruments and, and hand chimes and things like that, but they could afford the boom whackers. Do the hats come in sets? They come in sets, and they're, you have to be careful because. Um, they come in pentatonic sets. They well, we have the sets in our church, but I didn't know if, I've never seen the caps. So I didn't know if those were separate. Oh, or this, like, yes, they are separate. And right. I don't know how much, I haven't priced those in a while, but they come maybe in a set of some out there. six or eight. Are they eight in a set? Did you look? There's eight. And, and, and I had no idea how much they were. I just gave it to them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's oh, there's stuff that doesn't have prices, and it's been but, a little difficult. Yeah. Uh, maybe that could be on your comments. We just ordered some at our church. Right. Like five yeah, they're very, very reasonable. And you should probably get two sets. If you need one set, get two sets, because you know what happens when they walk away. Um, but I just love I just love when you add the caps, you get that, that added that lower octave um, speech. How do you put the how do you display what the kids are supposed to play? Okay. Like in this situation, I make visuals. Okay. And I'm trying to think, you know, I was we thinking about this. We don't have access to No, I mean, our room printed. is too small to have a. Yeah, I'm talking about like a sentence, like a sentence strip mm -hmm. that has the pattern on it. And for my younger guys, I wouldn't even necessarily draw the notes. Uh, there's, there's a blackboard behind it. Let me show you. Just need a, a memory um, trigger. And you teach all children all parts. And you okay, the that's the way right that word yeah. process works. In Happy Land, that's how we do it. But we know we only have so much time. So what I would do is I rotate over a four-week period that everybody would get to play that. And that's when you keep that little cup of needs a turn, had a turn with the sticks on them, so you move those over to the hat of terms, and you know those kids that are still there, they're the first ones to call on the next week. But she's exactly right. 
through our process, everybody is supposed to have a term like everything. We just don't have that luxury in church. Good question. I'm glad you said that. Um, that's, that's a little David, and I, I, I have used that in, in a setting with older children playing that. So it was in younger children material, but it app works beautifully with children and sixth grade kids. Um, and the speaking part, you catch the story. It really does. It's, it's kind of cutesy and everything, but it tells a story. It talks about David. Um, so they're getting that in their head as well. And I, that's, you know, that if you've been here with me at all, you know that I love to have a story about that. Okay, so done with that. Let's go on to um, the second one is, um, okay, this is also in a strange order. So find this sheet that says white socks, and I don't know where it is in there. It goes with more components, chant, and speech, ostinati. Okay? All right, how many of you have children or grandchildren? Does everybody have children or grandchildren or nieces and nephews? Do you have children in your life of some kind? Have you ever done their laundry? <laughs> I'm here to tell you about my daughter. I taught her how to do laundry when she was in sixth grade. I promise you, I taught her how to sort whites and darks and reds and colors. And today, to this day, she puts whites and darks and reds and colors in the same load. And my grandchildren have gray socks, and it drives them crazy. I'm like, they come to my house, and I wash their socks like three times, you know. And then, of course, they're you know, they're little girls and they walk outside in the dirt in their white <laughs> socks. And so anyway, this summer I was I needed an activity for something I was doing at the Georgia camp and I I decided I needed to write about socks because that seemed like a kind of camp thing to do when you get home with all the laundry. So we had this dedicated to Sarah, Rebecca, and Leah. I have washed their white socks many times. Um, so we have this one. Now this one, instead of having um, instrument parts with it, Go back to the, the description. It is a chant with speech ostinati that we can transfer to instruments and it has movement. What we're going to do is we're going to add these little ostinati down here, but first let's read it together, the entire chant, and I'm going to let you read. I'm going to pretend you were very advanced third graders. Okay, so you're going to read it. All right, ready? And here we go. White socks are so beautiful, they're clean as falling snow. When it's time to go outside, I grab my socks and go. I wear them with my tennis shoes, I wear them with my cleats. And when I take my shoes off, I just wear them on my feet. I wear them on the ball field, I wear them in the street. I wear them everywhere I go, they feel great on my feet. But then it's time to take them off, I throw them into clean. My white socks aren't so beautiful, if you know what I mean. Very fun. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to add speech ostinato. You understand what an ostinato is just a repeated pattern. It can be um, rhythm only. It can be an instrument part that's repeated over and over. It can be a speech part that's repeated. And it could be a melody pattern that's repeated. It's just something that's just, think of the word obstinate. It just goes on and on and can't be stopped. I can get that. I'm closer. <laughs> so that's the value of the kind of ostinato. So we have ostinato number one is sweat socks, knee socks, ankle socks galore. Try it. Sweat, sweat socks, knee socks, ankle socks galore. But it has movement. And here is the movement. It is sweat socks, knee socks, ankle socks galore. Sweat socks, knee socks, ankle socks galore. That's a good little workout, okay? So that's that's part one. And then we have part two is white socks, white socks, washing really white socks. And we're gonna make that little clap as we do. Ready? Go. White socks, white socks, washing really white socks. White socks, washing really white socks. So how about we divide into two parts? And we'll have the ostinato one part. Why don't we make, um, can we, we got one, two, how about three, four, five. That'll work. Y'all be ostinato one, and then you guys, and then you guys be ostinato number two. Did I say that right? You're one, you're two, so you get to moving part. 
Yes. Sweat sucks. Okay. When I, you keep going once I get you started, and when I start reading the other part, you bring down the volume just a little bit. Okay? All right, here we go. We'll start ostinato one, and then ostinato two, I'll bring you in, and then I'll start with the reading part. So one, two, three. Sweat sucks, knee sucks, ankle sucks, go more. Sweat sucks, knee sucks, flushing on the board sucks. Sweat sucks, knee sucks, flushing on the board sucks. Sweat sucks, socks are beautiful, they're coming small and slow. When it's time to go outside, I grab my socks and go. Wear them with my tennis shoes, I wear them with my boots. And when I take my shoes off, I just wear them on my boots. I wear them on the ball field, I wear them in the street. I wear them everywhere I go, they put them on my boots. But then it's time to take them off, I throw them into planes. My white socks are so beautiful, if you know what I mean. Okay, then we would have to switch, so let's switch. So now you're ostinato two and you're ostinato one, okay? Do you remember what it was? Mm -hmm. That's my favorite part, sweats. <laughs> okay. All right, so we'll start with one and then we'll add two. One, two, ready, go. Sweat socks, knee socks, ankle socks go long. Sweat socks, knee socks, ankle socks go long. And sweat socks, knee socks, ankle socks go long. Socks, 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 Great fun. And think of all the things they're accomplishing. This is an introduction to harmony. Remember we talked about that where you had the layers of independence that they're acquiring. It's not, it's not melody pops layered, but it is the layers. And so it's leading to um, singing the parts. Cool? Now this says movements on the Hostinata 2. It said left hand out, palm up. Uh, I changed it. Okay. I think I went, I was going to go uh, white socks, white socks, washing really white socks, but I decided I wanted more sound. That's why it's there. Okay. White okay. socks, white socks, washing really white socks. And it was easier for them to remember uh, this. Since there was so much movement without sound on the other one, I decided I would put that mm -hmm. one. That one. Okay. Yeah. And you can make up your own. These are not, you know, nothing fancy about that. Um, but an opportunity for uh, speech and instruments and movement all in one little piece. 
Okay. Now is when I can really use a piano player. Are you up to it? Okay. Um, this is, tell me what time I'm in, me and the quarter tail. Um, so, yeah, the next step was us at four. Okay, thank you. Um, Let's just simplify life. If everybody that's on the front row would go get um, a bell, a bell, and you can get hers first, and you can actually, we're not going to do the moon right first, you can actually get two bells if you want, so get the colored bells. And the second row, if you would get um, sticks, either the fives or just regular sticks or uh, drumsticks, just two sticks, just two sticks. And the back row, if you would get something to shake. If you get an egg shaker, get two. Okay, because they're not that loud. And y'all have to compete with these other people. Okay? And then we gather back over here. with and use all the notes, all the white notes, instead of doing a pentatonic. I was just tired of doing pentatonic. Plus the fact that those, those poor F and B boom micers sit there all the time lonely. They never get played. So I wanted that and the bells as well. And I wanted it in a minor key, so it's actually going to be an A minor. And um, I wanted to have you know, you sing, and then you improvise, and then you sing, and then you improvise, and you sing, and then you improvise. <coughs> That's what I wanted. So, I've done this with the orf instruments. Um, on the bars, we can improvise. I've done it with all the things that you have here. One of my favorite things to do is you sing the first stanza, and the front row improvises. So, you've got your bells, and you just random ring, whenever. And then you sing the second stanza, and we have the sticks. So, you just create whatever you want. Another way to improvise. And then we do the shakers after the third stanza. Then, if you want to do it again, everybody rotates rows and the front row comes to the bottom row and everybody moves back a row. It's like mass chaos, but you have new instruments and you do it all over again. Okay, give me the, what's the first pitch? Okay, now don't be a hater. It starts on low A, okay? Don't be a hater. You see why this works, okay? Repeat after me. Jack and Jill went up the hill. Jack and Jill went up the hill. You don't have to play with me, I'll just end it, okay? To fetch a pail of water. To fetch a pail of water. Is it on your sheet? Yeah. Oh, I'm so, so oh, not as crazy as I thought. <laughs> Let's sing it. Just sing it without the piano. Ready? Go. Okay. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. And so what we'll do then is we'll have the bells improvised for the same length of time. So you're actually going to play that two times. Does that make sense? Okay. And then we sing. Jack be nimble, Jack be quick, Jack jump over the candlestick. Jack be careful, jump up high, or you catch your pants on fire. And you got to go, fire. Fire, 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 and it's a very important safety tip if you're wearing pants when you jump over a candlestick, that you jump up really high. <laughs> All right, then we have Jack Sprat could eat no fat, his wife could eat no lean. So between the two of them, they lick the platter clean. And you have to say, they lick the platter clean. Try it. They lick the platter clean. All right, so we're going to have this production. Of course, this would have taken the... Uh, you know, three weeks to teach this, okay? But we're going to do it all at one time. So, sing stanza one, front row improvises, sing stanza two, second row improvises, sing three, third row improvises. Got it? Here we go. We don't have an introduction yet. And go. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack be nimble. 
bring in their improvisation into the choir time, and that's just a quick way to do it. Um, and you all did such a good job. The sticks were surprisingly good. It was a satisfying sound. You know, we always want to do the melody improvising. But it works fabulously well on your organ instruments, and you get to use all the bars. And so what you can do with that, if you do have the instruments and you have enough, you can have uh, child number one improvise the first time, and they pass the mallets, and child number two improvise the second time. So there's all kinds of ways you can do that. Another thing I do with that song, by the way, is we do the, we have the accompaniment, but I have a, a box, I don't, I didn't bring them with you, but I have a, a cup that has different song styles in it, or singing styles in it, like opera, and southern, and Texas, I don't have Texas in there, I have southern, and um, all the different, it's, oh, munchkins, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> can't remember. Anyway, there's numerous song styles in there. So they come up and the child and we pick and we have to sing the first stanza in Southern. Oh, Brooklyn. Uh, no, Jersey. Jersey is one of one of their favorite ones to do. But then we sing in that voice. So that's also your uh, playing with the voices, exploration of the voices. And getting those kids that are reluctant to sing, they'll sing in that goofy style. And then once you get them started singing, then you move on and sing for real soon. Um, but it's a great bit of fun. But you have that, but if you want the piano part that she played, you'll email it. I'll send you a PDF <coughs> of that if you'd like to have that. Thank you so much for playing with uh, us. I know this is the biggest mess we have been having in the Okay, so that's Jack. Um, could we do it without piano? I mean, you can do it without piano. We absolutely. Like can. we could do like just. The melody, ba ba ba, like we were doing or yeah, something. Yeah, with that. it. Absolutely. That's my struggle. I don't, I don't have a piano for yes. rehearsal. Yes, I know. That's the struggle. And you know what? I play the piano part, and they love it because I'm not very good at it. Mm -hmm. And that adds to the joy oh. of the <laughs> so, laughing at me. So sometimes I do. But yes, it'll work. It will work okay. that way. And you can actually use all three groups could improvise at the same time too. Or you can have one group and then add group two and then add group three. Just do whatever you want to, you know, just and let the kids suggest. They'll suggest different things you can do, which is a great, great thing uh, also. This morning I, I did the thing on the scriptures. Um, and this is the, the Wham 3 theme scripture at the bottom. And that one has just the flat claps in it. And when we did that with kindergarten in first grade, we did sticks now, or your sticks, and it sounds really good. And we've got 15 kids. Colossians 323. Colossians 323. I had to educate my children's minister in 6 8, though. She kept wanting to do it like a 4 4, four and I don't know how you make that happen. But we do so many rhythm patterns in four fours. I kind of had to educate you know, her, and she would, okay. And once, once she got it, then the kids got it. Uh, but having that dun 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 dun, dun there's a little weight there. So that's really a fun thing to do and meaningful as well. So that might be a verse that you would want to use. Another scripture, is that the next thing on your list? Is it a scripture? It's John 8 12. And I would like to do that. This one has body percussion. And it is, um, if you look back, the word components of the scriptures for speech, your body percussion, and this one is needed. You can do the uh, body percussion part on instruments, but why when you've got built in body parts? So, we, um, well, that sounded interesting. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you get unbuilt in. Let's just not even go there. Okay, so we have. Um, To you. Okay, and typically when we do this, we sit on the children's church room floor to do it with everybody in there. And it's an old um, building that has wooden floor under there, so they boom, boom, they do it on the floor and boom, 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 boom. Instead, it's like that we will, we will rock you, mm -hmm. but instead it's about Jesus, which is a lot better. Uh, I will tell you that when we get to the end, uh, we say John 8, 12, huh. I will tell you they do that. Uh, I'm just confessing that we do that. So uh, let's try that. So see if you can keep the, uh, we'll get the pattern going, and then we'll add the words to it, okay? 
You know, I, no longer when I hear that rhythm pattern anymore, I don't go to We Will, We Will Rock You. I go to John 8, 12, you know, which is that's a whole lot better. Okay. All right, so let's do the pat, pat, claps. Ready? And scripture is that um, the first night we did it um, last fall, we did the, our theme last year was the living in the light, that the growing grace, so this was our fall scripture. Um, there was a little girl who is, um, she was in the three-year-old choir, but she came in there with her dad at the closing things, they were waiting for big brothers, and they just felt, we have a lot of parents that just sort of sit in for that last little gathering time. And so the little girl was in there. Her name is Penelope. Mm -hmm. uh, but Penelope is three, and her um, she was in there, you know, listening to her brother. We did that thing maybe once, or maybe twice. We did this. Her mom showed me a video. I really meant to get this video of the next night when Penelope was coming in the bath, and Penelope was in the bathtub saying, "John." Well, Jesus spoke to the people like it. She said every word. Now it sounded like a three-year-old. You know, she had not only the words, but she had the scripture reference and everything that she had picked up with with that. And if it was a huge thing, she's sitting there, you know, throwing her washcloth and playing with her duck and, and doing this. And her mother was just aghast. Uh, but she had to bring it to me to show it. And I, I meant to actually borrow that um, to show you guys because it was. Totally unbelievable, but what a great testimony about what rhythm and music does for our memory. Yes, ma'am. Now, would you, uh, I have three year olds that got work with two, and would you expect them to do this in that? I mean, they can do one or the other. They can maybe just pat, and they're not even going to do the steady beat that great. Right. Uh, but I would simplify and teach a piece at a time. You can come in. Sure. Are you for the next class? Yes, at four. Right? Am I right? Yes. At 4.15. <laughs> I think it's something funky with the schedule. It's not just two. It's I think different. something no, it's, it's, it's not like it was yesterday. Yeah. 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 So they can do one or the other. Like one or the other. One or the other. Same thing they do pre K. Or I could have one group doing the duck, 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 the other one saying it. And you could reduce the amount of words. Often I do that and only do a piece of it for have a preschool version of it. So you could lecture Lee Bob Jesus spoke to the people again. You could say, I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. And then, then you can add later, those who follow me will never walk in darkness. You can add pieces. You can do Austin and you can do ostinato. And you can have them do it and you can read the whole verse and have them do the ostinato. Yes. Or they can they could just play a steady beat on, on drums or cups or plates or Steady beats. beats a good thing. Like that, always a good thing. Yes. Always a good thing. This, though, appeals to most ages when you when you add this. And you can transfer the bump, 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 bump to instruments. Um, so you can, I have, I think I told you I have all these Home Depot buckets. So I try to find ways to use them. You know, like 30 of them. So it could be side, side, top, side, side, top on the drum. Is that what those are? That's, those actually, I went to a conference in Alabama, and the theme of it was, um, I can't remember, something like rhythm or something, and everybody, instead of getting a bag, you know, like you give, we got a bag here. Yeah. So you got to get a bag, everybody got a bucket, and we had a percussionist come, and we did a, a group, group drumming with 200 people. So we had buckets, because that's cheaper than buying, you know, 200 remote gym base. Okay. <laughs> they, they took that home. And all of mine, though, will tell you if you use them, you really need to take the handles off, because they get in the way. I left those on there 
preparing stuff. Some preparing stuff, stuff yeah. 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 But my Home Depot buckets, all those, and I'm not commercial for Home Depot because the Walmart buckets and the um, Lowe's buckets, any of those work equally well. But I will tell you that one of the things that helps if you want to hit them with your hands is to go to, um, they, ha they have it all the, the um, those Home Depot, Lowe's, all those places. Get the gloves. They come in like a pack of 10. They're neon colors. The ones that I have are neon yellow. And they have, they are dipped in rubber. So they're black on this side and then they're yellow on this side. But they can hit those drums and you know how they're rough ridges, that keeps them from getting their hands beat up. Fabric on the back There's, it's like a rubber a coating. It's a rubber coating. And they can play. It doesn't hurt their hands, um, which is a really cool thing to do. I did it in Bible school. Uh, I had, this was the craziest thing. When the second grade boys came to music, it was all second grade boys. For some reason, we had no second grade girls come to Bible school this year. I don't know. They must have been on vacation. I don't really know. Because we do have second grade girls, but we just had this whole group of boys. I said, I am not doing singing and those motions with these boys because they will hate me. So what we did was we put the, the scripture, the media scripture, to percussion. So we used the bucket drums, and I had them sit on a drum bucket and, pl and then play. And I had them play this way with the gloves, and so we would pick, we get in there, and the drum is this way, upside down, or right side up, really, with the hole, and, we, you know, we'd have, I do this, and then raise that hand, this, and then turn this way, and turn this way, see the different colors, and then I would say, one, two, ready, and they would get, they would spin the bucket over and throw it up under their arm <laughs> all the same time, and then we, then we played with them, and we did the final uh, verse, and they loved me. They were so cool. They really loved me. And, they, and the thing of it is, I know that they know that scripture. And that was what's, you know, that's Bible school. That's what's supposed to, really supposed to learn. So um, I was highly recommend those. I mean, they're $10 for 10 pairs. And it's really hilarious if you put preschoolers' hands in those great big gloves, because then they look like <laughs> Mickey and Minnie with the great big kind of gloves. But it does protect their hands. It'll protect your hands. You know, broken blood vessels are not attractive in your palms. But those are great, but you can also, I also bought a quantity of those drumsticks. I didn't put a lot of money into them. I think I ordered them on um, Amazon last year. I bought um, two dozen pairs of those drumsticks, and I think I paid maybe $20 for two dozen pairs. So you can hunt around, and they love using the real drumsticks, um, especially those older boys. Um, it's just their bread and butter, but they really love that. My girls love it, too. So, drumming uh, and scriptures, a great way to go. Alright, did I cover everything on those sheets? Did I skip anything? I'm so sorry about the mixed up order. That was crazy. Oh, Coda. Yeah, Coda was like on page two. Did you notice that? Coda should have been at the end. <laughs> okay, my husband is a musician. <laughs> I don't know why Coda was in the middle. But anyway, Coda. Um, Using the step-by-step -step layering of elements in the is the whole process of learning. This can be applied in many ways without the expense of purchasing orphan instruments. If you want to add orphan instruments to your resources, consider adding them one or two per year, like I mentioned before, to your budget. And use these, this is another thing, use these in public venues. Don't just make them classroom instruments if they never come out, because if you use them in public venues, you're going to have people say, ooh, where did you get those? Do you want some more? And they will give you some money. That's always a good thing. And they'll say, yeah, would you like to buy, you know, provide an instrument? Memorial, yes. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially if you have, um, like last year, out of the blue, there was a couple in our church, I know it's time stop. there was a couple in our church that they have been homebound for the last year. He has a serious illness and, and just can't be out because his immune system is shot. And um, he... Up until he's, he sang in the adult choir, and he would stand outside waiting for my group to finish choir time, and would listen. I didn't know this, okay, and just got this joy from hearing the children sing every Wednesday night and do what they were doing. I had no idea he was even out there. So last year, at the end of the year, I got a note from our financial secretary saying that he and his wife had given money 
to the children's music budget in my honor because of what he had heard in there. So there's always people that care and are, are interested and, and want to help. So you know, you only, they can only say no, you know. Um, and then I already talked about the safe location. And then also educate your volunteers. Don't just buy the things and then have them there without, you know, bring everybody in, all the adults, bring them into play. Bring your pastor in to play. Uh, my pastor, I love him, but at Bible school, we did that whole drumming thing with the scripture, and he said, yeah, that was great. He said, why don't we do that all the time? The children's ministry looked at each other and went, Steve, we do. <laughs> so, but anyway, so bring your pastor in and let him play, uh, and there's this, the source of those. But that's it, and in 10 minutes, we have a reading session. It was much more fun to play. <laughs>